Welcome everyone. We are excited to present an introduction to the 12th annual Globe Sound Healing Conference. And we are here with David Gibson of the Globe Sound Institute. David, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Hi, Lauren. It's so good to see you again. Wee, 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 wee. Wee, wee. <laughs> We're talking about sound and the power of sound and the innate ability of sound to heal us and help us move through a lot of energy and really come back to our center, our soul, our higher consciousness. And this year's conference is all about together with sound. Share with us the overview of your interviews so far. Okay. The um, kind of the main theme this year that's coming through from a lot of presenters is exactly how to go from cool sound to like off the charts deep in pure light sound and there's so many presenters that are, we're talking about what's what do you do to actually get to the next level where the entire room is full of white light right because i've been to sound baths that are kind of cool and then other sound baths where it's like, holy moly, what is going on here, right? Mass healings, <laughs> right? And it's like, what are they doing that's making the difference, right? So it's like Satya is working at this whole other level. I mean, Mark Romero's pulling in like higher energies, like um, <clears throat> um, uh, um, uh, uh, Kimba, a uh, Rem, she's like working with the sound current right and it's like uh even uh, ashana is like working at this whole other level and so throughout i'm asking how do we get newbies there i mean you can just do peace right let's just get people peaceful but how do you really open up the portal so that you are one with the universe how do you open up the portal so you can contact higher beings that are healing every disease you got? How do you open up the portal directly to source? And it's pretty easy if you've done it before. Sometimes it's not, actually. Some people have actually been there, but they don't know how to access it at will. And I think this is where we're headed, to be able to access this higher information where all is known where you can hear the song of the plant and sing it where you can see all lifetimes right no more workshops no more conferences no more class <laughs> classes it's all known right and so it's like a major thing how to actually get there so everybody has their own perspective on how to access it oh who, who else was really good actually white feather white feather is kind of a master at it she's like really got into it in detail it's so and then just took us there with sound right it was so it's it's really kind of the next level of i mean it's it's your everybody's homework should be how to access source at will I mean that's that's the deal and then one person I was talking to said okay how do we manifest whatever we want or whatever we want for the planet which has to be in alignment with source or with the plan otherwise it can cause little problems right <clears throat> and that's like the ultimate I mean, I know hardly anybody that, I mean, is a master at manifesting exactly what they want in their life, right? Or manifest, I mean, there's, there's some that are doing really good and, 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 and helping the planet a lot, right? But most people, there's no driver. There's no, and things are just happening. It's like, okay, I'm running this energy and source goes, okay, 
I'll give that energy back to you. You weren't thinking, but I'm going to give it back to you anyway. <laughs> right? And this is, I mean, a lot of people know pretty well. Actually, it's kind of amazing how much people can open their hearts. I mean, most people with the right energy can open their heart. Not everybody. There's some people that need a little help. They're in their head. They're in their head, right? But we're, it's pretty, people are pretty far along as far as opening their hearts. Even, you know, people that are not into conscious. I mean, you know, all religions are about this. So there's, you know, we got that. And then nature seems to do it as well. So we're doing pretty good. But to be able to use your mind to actually manifest structures that will actually <clears throat> help your own life flow more and to create structures that will clean up the planet, that will, you know, um, uh, help stop war, that will create health care for people that doesn't kill people. <laughs> right? I mean, this is the deal. And it's, in a lot of, it's, it's interesting. So there's one uh, presenter, um, 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 blank on his name. Let me look at his, here we go. Uh, we got the guy that does music for movies. Um, uh, do, do, do. Um, Gary Malkin. Gary Malkin, just incredible musician. Really, I mean, been doing movie uh, soundtracks for movies and kind of a master at doing doing music that will get you out of your head into your emotional body where love exists, right? And a few people are like saying, okay, we just got to get out of our head. Well, that's the first step. If you're not dropping down into your emotional body and feeling, you're not alive. But then, higher consciousness, and this is what a lot of people have been talking about in the conference, is where you're actually going to a level where you're working with your mind and your emotional body and your soul and source all at once. So now you are using your mind and connected to all, all of this. I mean, it's so funny because a lot of people say, well, you really just need to get out of your head and allow those emotions. And I'm like, yes. But what if they're there for months and you're in anxiety or stress or or, you know, whatever emotion that's not feeling, or even grief for months and months and months. Do you just say, okay, I am going to allow it. I'm going to allow myself to feel bad the rest of my life. <laughs> no, we're not meant to feel bad. Change that emotion. I mean, change it, the upset to compassion. Change the anxiety to love. Right? And that's a mental process. It's a mental process that leads you back into a different emotion. But you're, you, that's manifestation right there. Right? So it's really, really cool. Uh, I just got like such a, a, a wider perspective on not only how to access higher consciousness, but how to teach people that that when you say this, they you know you say, oh, let's go into the light, let's go into uh, connection to source, one with the universe, and they go, they look at you like you got two heads. It's like, what are you talking about, right? And that's the essence of changing the world is helping those newbies. And it's so funny. This is one one epiphany that I got just in a uh, uh, one of the talks that was really incredible. It's like, you know, I said newbies, like they don't know about this. I mean, they 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 have an experience 
oneness in 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 you know oneness at all and then i thought wait a second that's where we came from and as babies they're still in that realm so it's not like they're newbies it's just like they just forgot when the parents said be this way <laughs> so that's really exciting there but then there's the people that are doing the science I mean Karen Holly went into minute detail in a really cool way so it wasn't like like you know flat or boring of the exact science of how toning and humming actually create nitric oxide which and all the benefits of nitric oxide how vibration on the body creates these serious benefits and that's really cool because it's science like that that's helping bring this into the mainstream especially into hospitals <clears throat> i mean there's there's uh there's a lot of science that uh gary malkin brought in as well <clears throat> um <laughs> and then and then uh there's also uh dina she uh, dina monofiscoli went through a good amount of science and even Gerald Savage uh, talked about the science. And then John Stuart Reed actually did an experiment where he, on camera, where he shows uh, more electricity being put into the water, uh, which you can actually do by toning into the water. And he shows how electricity, more electricity in the water is really good for, for your system. So... There's, there's all of those people that are doing the science. But then there's the ones that are really out there. And it's so much fun when they're really out there, right? There's, <laughs> there's Jamie Price, who does light language, and with every single movement and... and, and uh, uh, you know finger movements oh my god it's like oh um, and then there's all of the different sound baths we've got some some people from other dimensions in the sound bath this time you won't be bored i mean snow raven it's like holy moly what is going on and then ganadi it's like whoa whoa right it's like oh my god as my friend said they're, they're like like aliens right but what's so cool about it and even Satya doing a treatment on me in real time in, in, the, in this show. What this shows is these guys are masters at using sound. I mean, way more than what I can do. I mean, really masters. They're not just doing sound. They're running serious energy, right? I mean, really serious energy. I mean, Satya, you know, <clears throat> I've got like some blood clots that have come back. She like got rid of like the blood clots, right? And it's like, I mean, we're talking magic and this is our birthright for us all to get to that point where you don't have to go to the doctor, you know? I mean, you could just call up your friend or just go to that part of the body. I mean, when we get back to that realm where we're all masters, it's just like, bing, and that disease is gone. It's like, and that emotion is no longer running through your system, right? I mean, this is really where we're headed. So even though some of the, <laughs> the people doing sound baths seem so out there, right, it's just inspiring to see the, the beautiful energy they're running and to realize the potential of where we could all be and are headed, right? 
That is what makes this so fascinating. I love the blend of science because that is what validates it for so many people. And the experiential of it from the masters of sound is what allows us to witness it in our own life. And so there's a couple of directions we're gonna take here. I first wanna ask you about the blood clots and the sound. As you look into that, it's a, what do you determine that that was? Uh, is it energy? Like, could you say a blood clot is clotted energy and the sound um, dismantled it? The sound dissolved it? Have you been able to contemplate that? Yeah, you know, there's really two ways you can go. First of all, the definition of good health is smooth flow through all the systems in the body. No blockages. I mean, that's, I mean, smooth flow through the nervous system. And your, uh, if you don't have smooth flow, you'll be shaky. If you don't have smooth flow through the circulatory system, you can have a heart attack. If you don't have smooth flow through the digestive system, all types of problems can happen. If you don't, smooth flow through a meridian is the whole deal poke that frequency of the acupuncture point with a needle and activate its frequency so it retrieves and and uh, uh, receives and transmits the flow, right? It's all about smooth flow. So you can either look at where the blockages are and break them up. And then there's a lot of people talked about Anthony Holland, you know, destroying cancer cells and we talk about the ultrasound that will destroy cancer cells and the real-time <clears throat> uh, uh, focused MRI that's now being introduced into hospitals that will explode cancer cells in 15 minutes, you go home and zero side effects. I mean, we're talking no more radiation and chemo, right? Or, or even just making an intense sound, ah! right, to release an emotion. So there's breaking up the blockages or resonating the blockages into harmony so that you get them back to their coherent state. So you're not trying to break them up, but you're just trying to return them to that frequency of stability that it was before there was the blockage. And then it will receive and transmit the flow again. So you can go either way. So with the blood clot, you know, it's interesting when I think about, because I know Satya really well, and I think about what she's doing. There is a definite energy of breaking it up. But, you know, you can just go to the other side where you resonate what's right. And even to the level of universal love and source energy. So source totally goes in, either breaks it up or just returns it to its harmony. So you're now completely resonating just this, the energy of source. And I know she, she that's what she does. She's not even working with higher beings, although she, you know she says they sometimes show up. It's more just direct energy of source. And so that's like totally what's right and an intelligent energy that's actually just going to do whatever it takes to break, either break it up or create the flow. So now as we get into the science of this, if science could only discover this more, and I know like Dr. Norm Shealy even did some research on this and determined that the sound is really scalar energy. So when you're talking about Satya and, and her channeling source energy, Source energy is scalar energy. Isn't that amazing? And yeah. then John Stuart Reed with the toning on water. Wow. This is where we've said so many times the world should be toning, humming, and dancing, and singing <laughs> all over the place. I envision that world, and I do see it. But isn't that amazing about scalar energy? Do you know if that's even been measured? Well, yeah, you can measure scalar energy. I've now got a rodent coil, R-O-D-I-N, and it actually puts out 
uh, we run our music on from the sound table through it and it creates a a, a toroidal scalar field for 30 miles oh my god oh my god Bing! it's like I can hardly handle it actually <clears throat> it's really interesting though but because you know if you look at and I talk about this in my opening presentation <clears throat> it's not just sound it's vibration and vibration includes sound electromagnetics light which is especially infrared light because that penetrates the skin and scalar waves so now we're talking about and scalar waves actually include intention because intention is a scalar wave right so scal scalar waves are simply resonant frequencies or flows in the quantum field right and they're i mean this is not woo woo it's actually interesting if you look up scalar waves you'll see a ton of woo woo and but then there's actual definitive science about it as well right so it's real they're really uh, measurable and and they have very specific ways to create them so they're they're very real <clears throat> and and so if you work at all levels sound and and uh, electromagnetics and light and scalar waves oh my god so what we're doing is now we're creating a virtual reality system where you can look down and see a graphic of inside of your body with all 11 systems flowing based on <clears throat> a EKG or EEG that's hooked up to you so it's actually your metabolism flowing in real time in virtual reality you look down like whoa look at the circulatory system where well, it's a nervous system there's the energy going through the the skeletal system there's the energy going through the the digestive system and it's rhythm right you're seeing your own rhythms <clears throat> and then you find the actual notes within each of those systems we are kind of already got the rhythm because it's from the EKG and EEG and now we've got all 11 songs of you flowing through those 11 systems and we use needles with frequencies right and we use uh, electromagnetic uh, micro uh, uh, microcurrent pads right and we use infrared light and we use scalar waves all tuned to your 11 songs to heal every disease in the world so we've got that river of flow going through each of your 11 system at all different levels and you're seeing it and when it all syncs up you see all your systems get in sync as you start breathing to the actual rhythm of you when you're in the zone. All right, I can hear so many people asking, <laughs> where can they get this? <laughs> We're just, we, we, it just so happened this guy shows up, this does virtual reality, is at my house. We're now actually starting to program it. And it'll probably take, you know, six months to a year to really get all those. I mean, that's a lot of different levels working, right? But it's good. It's, I mean, yeah, we're talking a whole nother level. This is what is really interesting is, you know, there are so many cool devices out there. Electromagnetically, there's the Healy, there's the Rife machine, there's... There's the med bed. I mean, there's there's like a hundred of these electromagnetic and scalar wave devices, but none of them that I've seen are using flow. And flow is the whole deal. Our systems are based on flow. the frequencies make up the flow. They're like the notes of the song, right? But it's really the flow that does it. What song are going through your system? And so I see that's, that, that's really going to change the whole system of devices. Now, we've got our medical sound association with over 600 doctors, and we meet bi-monthly to, to really start to figure this out. And we've got, you know, uh, treatment plans for all these different issues on our site, medicalsoundassociation.com now, where you can see detailed treatment plans. But, you know, 
the other presentation that I did <clears throat> is really interesting. The last presentation of the conference. Yep. People are going to be just blissed out. What I talk about is when you tune in to multiple things at once, like sparkles on the water, all the sounds in a song, or all of the frequency or harmonics in a crystal bowl, right? or just a view in nature, or all the branches of a tree, or a you know, a forest. I mean, when you tune into multiple things at once, you go into theta. Well, that's the exact same state you're in when you're one with the universe. It's measurable. And it's a rhythm of four to eight cycles per second. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right? So what I do in the last presentation is I do like six different meditations where we tune into multiple things at once three levels of gratitude you know your gratitude in your system gratitude in a group of people gratitude on the planet <clears throat> uh, we we tune into transmitting love receiving love and being one with the universe even being one with the universe is 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 a lot of things we we do a whole meditation on source energy where we tune into all frequencies in the universe at once we tune into all seven chakras simultaneously and by the end i mean you know, I've I've done all of these before. I was just like, oh my God, now I've got to talk. I've got to talk. Oh God, Lord, you know. Oh yeah, okay, I've got to talk. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's right? Bliss. Yeah, that's the bliss that you're able to achieve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll get blissed out. But it also shows, it explains why sound baths are effective. Because all these different frequencies, especially a gong, you know, just a gong, there's so many different frequencies in it. There's no way the left brain could even keep track of it at all. So you go into the right brain, which is theta. <clears throat> so that's really cool. That's a, another avenue of accessing higher states of consciousness. Okay. Very, very cool. Oh, oh my goodness. One other, okay. There's one other thing. Uh, there's a couple. Uh, uh, we have Gregory Hogue, oh, and yeah. and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, who's the other one that does the sacred geometry? Uh, Peter Sterling, right? He goes into sacred geometry as well. Oh my God, you know, I mean, they're creating ge geometrical forms that will take you out, and they've been doing this for thirty years, so they've gotten really good at it. Right, so it's really, and then to actually tie in geometries to actual sound at the same time, it's really, really, really fun. You know, one of my favorites is Jane Winter. Jane's music, every time it comes on, <clears throat> you know, Spotify or Pandora that I listen to, it's like I kind of stop and I go, what is this? It's so deep, right? And and I was just she's in in Denmark, and it was just a a pleasure interviewing her with a hundred Tibetan bowls around her, right? And and just her energy is just so so sweet. <clears throat> and uh, then there's Yasos who's been doing sound since the beginning of time, right? Yasos plays this video of him going through all the different ways that you can actually use music to access <clears throat> all different types of energy. He's kind of categorized the different ways and then plays different examples. To, so everything from just getting really into a state of love to just blissed out and dancing. It's really, it's really a unique perspective that he provides on how music can be used to, to do many things. Yes, and looking back, this is kind of off, off subject, but looking back at how, I mean, Footloose, the movie Footloose comes to mind, how they didn't want the youngsters uh, getting into the music because they thought it would corrupt them in the bad way. 
But music really does open our heart. I mean, I felt this um, in my own life, and this is just our mainstream music over the radio, that sort of thing. And those aren't even consciously created with the frequencies and the electromagnetics and the scalar waves. So, wow, the energy of it and the intention of it. So as our world shifts and people are more aware of how they feel, how they respond to music, it is changing even as we speak. It really is going to be beautiful. And there's more musicians that are stepping up, like Mark Romero, when he brings in his music, it's like meditation with the music and you can instantly feel a shift. And this is the importance of consciousness and music or consciousness and sound. And isn't it interesting there was something that happened. You, you mentioned that, you know, sometimes we just have to scream it out and that moves the emotion out. That's really good. Um, something happened in my life. I saw these really old trees, old, I must've been a tree in another life because <laughs> these trees were four of them one by one being chopped down. And when the sec I didn't, I only heard the first one and then I went to go watch. And then I saw the second one fall me i screamed at the top of my lungs mm. three times hey wow. hey then i calmed wow. down and then the only thing that i could think of doing was to tone mm. just to tone and somehow mm. that toning helped me in the moment helped me connect and guess what i realized i got a download in that moment and then later as that download was unpacking it was from the trees and it was from the beings. Wow, I'm going to cry. It was from the beings of the land who were there mm. and they were mm. saying, everything's okay. Mm. This is our time. And we're glad that you were there to witness because something was activated in this situation moving forward. And so I share that story because the toning was my go-to the toning was the savior the source the the medicine it's so easy and it's free right. oh my god there's so many musicians the sound baths before the presentations this time <laughs> you yeah. could just if just watch those and people would be like blissed out i mean it's like gabriel gold i'm just in tears right and then like different different people doing sound bath it's just i'm just getting chills and energy flowing i mean it's like so amazing when people really know <clears throat> uh, how to bring in the right energy and we're not just talking like sweetness we're talking there's something else going on there's really something else going on it's you know maybe it's angels i mean who knows but there's it's like it's like it's really profound how deeply the the sound and music that people do these days in this field are, are. i mean it's like a whole nother level that people never imagine i mean rock and roll is is nothing compared to <laughs> Although there was a few rock and roll, I mean, Pink Floyd kind of died, did it, you know, sometimes for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't bring in the love as, enough. Right? Oh, my goodness. So, um, so sound, sound really opens the heart. Let's go back to that, because when you were talking in the beginning about the mind and getting out of the head... We love the science aspect because that goes through the head for those who need to understand it. But then the experience of the sound to open the heart, some would question, you said the word newbies. Newbies would question, how do you get in the heart? How do you know when you're in the heart? This really is a lesson of our times. Many of us do know how to get in the heart. We're, we're trained in that way now and that's wonderful. But what are your thoughts with that? I mean, maybe that maybe that's the toning. The toning took yeah. me out of my head and my emotional Ooh. 
and to my heart. So your thoughts. You know, number one thing I think that brings people into their heart is another person sitting there that's already in their heart. And so it's really the energy of that person. Now, when they're in the energy and heart energy, and then they do a sound, now that's resonating the heart, right? Even more. So now you're getting the sound coming out of the heart, right? And now you've got this big resonant field. Physics, there's the law of physics that says a strong vibration will overcome a weaker vibration and entrain the weaker into the stronger. And that's a stable, consistent vibration. So that's number one. And, we, and we've known this forever. I mean, people go and sit with spiritual leaders in satsang all the time just to absorb that love energy and that stability and, 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 and peace. So that's the number one thing. I mean, you can't access love from the heart. You can lead people to a jumping off point, but talking about love does not necessarily, some people it might trigger it. Like, oh, well you could, you know, I mean, a, a jumping off point. I remember that time when you were like in full love, right? Go back to that, you might have to peel away the person, but go back to that. Uh, so we're jumping back, using the mind to get to that feeling. So it's, it's all about feeling and uh, ima I mean, it's like going to see Ama, <clears throat> the, the hugger, professional hugger, <laughs> right? Oh my God, it, regardless of Ama, there's like 500 or 1,000 people there that are totally running love energy. And, it's, and the music is like all based around love. You just walk into the, the, the cathedral and it's like, whoa, right? It's, that's, I mean, being around people and loving energy is the deal. Now, if you want to get scientific about it, the most common musical interval for love is the, mi uh, the uh, uh, minor third descending, which is like, That's the most common interval used in love songs, right? There's also certain instruments that resonate love more. A gong isn't really the instrument of love. The harp is more about love, right? Maybe an, a, a really soft uh, pink <laughs> alchemy bowl made of gold, right? Or rose quartz. Right, that could be love. So there's different, or maybe a little sansula thumb organ, like a little kalimba. They're so soft, or the little koshi chimes. They're really soft. So there's the the actual sounds of love. <clears throat> there's even the actual now frequencies of love. That's that's kind of a funny area. I mean, at first, you know, Leonard Horowitz said 528 hertz is love. <coughs> A little high, right? And now he admits it has nothing to do with that. So a lot of people have revert, reverted to 432 hertz, which is ee, still kind of high, but at least they say that's the heart meridian, right? <clears throat> but just do love whatever frequency feels good. Bring love into your heart and just listen for its note. Go up and down, play with it, and whatever it is, just do that. Ooh, this is what I come up with. Everybody comes up with a different note and just do it. But that's, I mean, I can't argue that's not it for me. That's it. I'm feeling it. But the next step with sound is to access universal love. I mean, and it's so funny when I ask people in, in, in workshops, I say, how many people have ex experienced universal love? And sometimes it's 50% only. And I say, how many can access it at will? And it's only about 30%. I mean, that's like the second you can access this infinite love that never goes away. 
some people say it comes in through the thymus down into the heart. All right. When you can access that, there's no neediness in a relationship. You've got all the love in the world. If someone you really love dies, it's still a bummer, but it's not like all this love in the universe is gone. It's still totally there, even way, it never goes away. And it's actually way more powerful than any love between people. Although sometimes we, we actually this is the, the, the problem, okay, it can happen. When you connect to a person and you each trigger each other to go into universal love, and then now you got this really cool portal where you can every time you connect you it's not just loving each other I love you no that's that's silly who cares about I love you it's like oh my god do you feel it Ooh. oh yeah together feeling it oh my god Ooh. four hours later you're like sex who cares about that <laughs> this is light years better right and then that person goes away and you lose your easy portal to another dimension. Okay, now it's a problem. And then you gotta really get it down. You don't need someone else to do it, to, to access it. So that's the homework. That and oneness are the, the homework that everybody should be really focused on. It's just, it's the, the second you run universal love, any sound, the body starts healing. Your emotions are not even what emotions, it's all love. You know, your brain gets focused. And actually it gets focused in a really much more expansive way because it's not just did, 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 did. it's more like right? And then of course often higher beings show up because they want to hang out too and now you got like a whole party of people helping you <laughs> right I mean that's the deal and again <clears throat> a lot of people you say uh, you know let's do universal love and they go <laughs> they definitely look at you like you, like you got like you got three heads what's that so the way I always start is I go, just send love to your heart with a soft sound. You've got all the love in the world right there. No matter who leaves or dies, you've got it all right there. And that's Most people can do that. They don't look at you like you got two heads. That's why I see a world with everyone toning, singing, and dancing. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Regulating tools that we have. And when we look back at uh, the aboriginals, they walked the planet singing it into existence. And so this is really important teachings and the homework for everyone to be able to access source at will, access that feeling of love, universal love at will. I was just contemplating what is love, you know, all these different ways and, and our ability to anchor into it and tune into it. It is innate, but we do have to get out of our head because the head keeps us questioning all of it when it's more of an experience. Uh, yeah. One thing that I've learned, even from the conference, we talked about it as well, is sadness gets you out of your head. Uh -huh. Right? You don't go, oh, I'm feeling sad. It's good. You know, no, you, it's actually totally an emotion. So it gets you out of your head. And sadness is not a chaotic vibration. It's not like, ah, or, or anxiety, or fear. Ah. 
Sadness is a sweet sound. If you just sit with it, it actually feels sweet. I love sad movies. I love to cry. It's my favorite thing, right? I look for them. It's like, okay, which movie can I find where I can cry? It's like, what a great release, right? It's really beautiful. And then, because you're in your emotional body, love is right there. So I'm now looking at sadness as a perfect portal to love. Yes, that makes so much sense. <laughs> because it, it opens our heart. It, right. it requires the heart. It requires that feeling of heart. That's funny. When the... Um, when the uh, 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 nuclear power plant in Fukushima, when it exploded, mm. Tom Kenyon said, it's one of the biggest heart openings we've had in a long time. Because everybody was like, oh. Alice Bailey said, the biggest heart opening we've ever had on this planet was World War II. I just got big chills on that. Even so many people knew people that died or were hurt. And just studying it as we were force fed it in schools, that history, it never resonated. It just it there's something innate within each of us that it's you know, the bomb right. that just you know, it just um just was never right. Never right. And uh so, um, you know, here we are in our world. When you look at the outer world, the collective in, I guess you could say newspapers or you know, the media, does that drive you even further or even deeper in your work when you see uh, that mission? Or do you just not pay attention to that? You stay focused. Oh, um, oh I, I do a meditation in my last, uh, uh, last presentation on exactly this and it's really interesting I'll kind of just tell you about it because it's it's really a, a unique way of dealing with what's going on in the world you know when I think about uh, uh, I have an uh, I'm stuck in a negative emotion or I have a problem or I'm stressed about something which could be my own problem or it could even be the whole world if you actually think of instead of like trying to go let's just think positive that's kind of tricky because the second you think positive you can if you're really good at it you could stay there but often that negative side is just waiting to like like get you in the butt <laughs> right it's not gone away you know if you just think positive it's still there it's like you're ignoring it right which is not the best way to live in reality so instead Think of all your problems. Think of all the problems on the planet. But to be completely fair, think of all the things you can be grateful for. There's hundreds, th hundred things. I mean, I've got the video sound of, of gratitude that goes through like a hundred things you can be grateful for. There's so many. So then sit with all of it all the problems and all the gratitude and now you're tuning into multiple things at once and you go to that still point of theta just watching it and now you are completely present with the world and the universe and you're not depressed it's not a bummer it's not it just that's it's just like Ah, uh, it's just what is. Ah, uh, and then, if you want to take it to the next level, go into compassion, like Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin's sitting. The, Kuan Yin's taking in all the suffering on the planet, and Kuan Yin's not depressed. <laughs> she just holds love for it all. But just there it is it's it's perfect and you're still because you're just watching it 
that is a meditation in its own vessel right yeah. there for yeah. all of us yes and i also see the infinity symbol like weaving between those two the and mm. everything and that is presence there's no problem in the present okay well sound is wonderful sound is our world and we invite everyone watching and listening to join us for this conference it is no charge free of charge and you can access it and watch it and get the bliss from those sound baths before every presentation and there's an upgrade offer that is beautiful because you get to take the sound baths and use them in your life whenever you want, bliss out with them. And also the information and the content of these teachings are downloadable as well, plus a bunch of other bonuses that are included, including David's teachings from the Globe Sound Institute. Wow, David, anything else that uh, sticks out about this beautiful conference. It's interesting. The, the thing that uh, is in my mind right now is um, um, there's the one presenter, um, uh, Kemba R uh, Rem, and she talks about the sound current that is present in the universe and she hears it through her actually it's funny she had a near-death experience and then actually uh, started hearing this sound which is like tinnitus but she uses it to access higher consciousness but she did her whole presentation on how all spiritual traditions she went through 25 spiritual traditions and what they call it and how they describe this sound current which is the the energy of the universe and source through through all religions or also all spiritual traditions and it's interesting when you really tune into that and you realize it's all right here as a vibration the sound that i made of it is this